Hey everyone, we're going to talk about domain and range today. I'm going to go through four different examples and they're going to continuously get more difficult as we go on. I'm going to give an example of a linear function, a quadratic function, a linear function with a hole in it, and a piecewise function. Um, it is all going to be in set builder notation. Um, I will do a separate video on interval notation as well. So set notation. There's three main things with set notation that you always have to use. What you'll notice is that set notation always uses these curly brackets, uh, which are actually called braces, but I like to call them curly brackets just because it's a little bit more fun, but they are called braces. And then there's always three different sections. We always have to set up a variable. We have to say, where does that variable exist or what are the bounds of that variable? And what number system are we looking at? It, how they're separated is using a few different symbols. What you'll see in set builder notation is this vertical line. What this vertical line stands for is the words such that. Here you'll have this little funny looking E. That E stands for is an element of. So when you look at set notation, it's a mathematical sentence. So how I would say this out loud. For all values of x, such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than 5, and x is an element of the real numbers. So a couple other notations. This fancy looking R that I have stands for the real numbers. You may see other types of, I guess, number systems depending on what type of graph or what type of function or what type of relation you are looking at. You may see things like N for natural numbers, W for whole numbers, Z for integers, Q for rational numbers, Q with a bar over top or, bar, or Q bar for irrational numbers, but the most popular one that we see is real numbers, so you'll use the R. Couple other things to mention. Depending if we're doing domain or range, that's going to change our variable. If you're doing just a graph, you'll probably see that you're going to use X or Y for your variable. One thing I want you to notice is that whatever variable I set up on the left side, is the same variable that I set up in my inequality for when I was setting up my upper and lower bounds. In the middle section where I'm doing the bounds, what you're going to notice is that I have an inequality. Depending on if there's an upper bound, a lower bound, both, neither, this section is going to be what changes the most. This is often the hardest part of writing set notation. Let's look at a few examples. Starting with example one, what we see here is that we have a linear function. I have both a lower bound and an upper bound. What you may notice is that one circle is filled in and one circle is not. Whenever I see a circle that's being filled in, that means that we're going to include that end value. If I have a circle that is not filled in, then we are not going to include that end value when we go to write out our domain and range. Let's start with domain. Domain is talking about what is happening with the x values. There's three questions I always tend to ask myself. What is the smallest or the lowest x value possible? What is the highest or the largest x value possible? And is there anything weird going on in between? To answer the first question, what is the smallest or lowest x value? Well, that's here at negative five. What's the highest possible x value? That's here at four. Is there anything weird going on in the middle? Not really. We have a straight line connecting those two points. There's no holes, there's no gaps, there's nothing weird going on. We're ready to write our domain. First, what we're going to start with is the brace, and we need to state what variable we're talking about. Well, with domain, we're talking about the x values, so we're going to set up our variable x. We're going to input our vertical line that stands for such that. So for right now, what our mathematical sentence says is that for all values of x, such that. Next, I need to write in my inequality. I'm going to start with my variable and I'm going to leave a little bit of space here because I have a lower and an upper bound. What I notice, x has to be greater than this number. It cannot be equal to it. So it has to be bigger than or greater than negative 5, but it cannot be equal to negative, it cannot be equal to negative 5. How I write that in is like this. x has to be greater than negative 5, but it has to be less than this number. It has to be less than 4. It can also be equal to 4, so we need to input a line underneath my inequality. Now what this inequality is saying is that x has to be greater than negative 5 and less than or equal to 4. The next thing we need to do is put in our number system. Here we have a continuous line. 
all of the numbers, every single number between negative 5 and 4 is going to be included. So we say that x is an element of the real numbers and we close our brace. Next, let's look at range. The range, we're going to start with our brace and we need to set up our variable. Range is talking about y values. So we'll start by putting in y and we'll put in our vertical line. Next, we have to ask ourselves those three questions. What is the lowest or smallest y value? Well, that's here at negative 2. What's the highest y value? That's here at positive 3. Do I notice anything weird going on with this graph? No, it's the same with the domain. It's just a line, it's just connecting those two points, nothing weird going on in the middle. So let's go ahead and write our inequality. So we're looking at y values that have to be greater than, but not equal to, negative 2. And they have to be less than, but they could be equal to 3. Next, we say what number system we're in. Same as domain, we are looking at real numbers. So y is an element of the real numbers. Let's try a little bit of a harder example. Our next example is a quadratic function. First, let's look at our domain. Asking yourselves those three questions. What is the smallest possible x value? Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I notice that I have this arrow. The arrow here means that this graph is going to continue forever. What that means is that if I kept drawing this graph, it's going to continue. And it's going to start growing in the negative x direction, essentially forever. It's not going to grow very fast in that direction. Like we're not going to get to negative 10 for a while, but we will eventually get there. These arrows mean that this is boundless. Technically, I can go all the way to negative infinity in this direction. When I start to look at this arrow, it's the same idea. I could keep moving to the right all the way up to positive infinity. Remember that what you're looking for for domain is you're looking for what x values are possible. Meaning, if I was to look at an x value of 0 0.5, could I find a y value? Well, yeah, it hits the graph here and I can find a y value for that. What about at 1? Perfect, yeah, I could eventually hit the graph and I'm going to find a y value for that. But what about 4? Well, it's just not on this graph, but I could draw a line and if I was to keep extending this, they would eventually cross. It wouldn't be for a while, but it would eventually happen. So there's no bound in the x direction. How do we write that in set notation? We're going to start with our brace and set up our variable. So for all values of x, such that. Because it's boundless, we don't really have an inequality to say. You could, I guess, write from negative infinity to positive infinity in this next section, but it's kind of just not really needed. There is no restriction in the x values, so then we can go straight to our number system, which is real numbers. So x is an element of the real numbers. Now let's look at range. Same idea, we wanna look at setting up our variable, so we're talking about y values, so for all values of y such that. I wanna think about what is the smallest y value possible. Well, again, because of these arrows, this is going to continue all the way down to negative infinity in the y direction. As I go up, what I notice is that I have a maximum y value here at 2. That's the largest. So it can go from negative infinity, but it can go up to positive 2. Well, how do I write this as an inequality? If I'm saying this out loud, what I would say is that it can be any number as long as it's not greater than 2, meaning it has to be less than or equal to 2. So y has to be less than or equal to 2, and y is an element of the real numbers. Let's try a harder example. Our next example, again, is a linear function, but it has a hole in it. It has this, just this random piece that's missing. How do I compensate, or how do I write that for domain and range? First, let's start with domain. We're going to start with the beginning, just like we always do. We're going to start with our brace and set up our variable here, which is x. When I think about what's going on, what's my lowest bound? Well, that arrow means that I can go all the way to negative infinity in the x direction. This arrow up top means I can go to positive infinity in the positive x direction. My third question is always, is there anything weird or anything going on in the middle? Well, yeah, in the middle, there's this giant hole. This doesn't work. What this means again, remember that an open hole means that it's not included in my values. So all of a sudden, this value cannot be included. Well, what's the x value of that point? 2. What this means is that any x value is possible except 2. 
How do we write that in math notation? What I would say is that x cannot be equal to 2. And this is the symbol that we use for when we're saying it's not equal to. So x cannot be equal to 2. It's the only restriction that we have. So then we can input our comma and we can state our number system. x is an element of the real numbers. Let's now look at range. Very similar idea. Start with your brace, put in your variable, and now we're looking at which bound or what is my restriction. What I want to look at again is those arrows mean that I can go all the way down to negative infinity in the y direction. This arrow means I can go to positive infinity in the positive y direction. Is there anything weird going on in the middle? Yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing as before. But now I'm, car now I'm carrying what the y values as opposed to the x values. The y value of that point is at 3. So essentially, we can have y being anything except it cannot be equal to 3. And again, y is an element of the real numbers. Our last example is going to be a piecewise function. All right, what we have here is a piecewise function. So it's a bunch of functions that have been put together, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Let's start with the domain. First, we'll use our brace. We'll input our variable. We're talking about x. And we're looking at such that what? Now, what is going on? What is my smallest x value possible? Well, because of this arrow on the very far left side, that implies that we could go all the way to negative infinity. What's the largest x value possible? Well, this arrow is indicating that I could go all the way to positive infinity. Is there anything weird going on in the middle? Yeah, absolutely. We've got, we're going down to here and we get to this point. That point's included, so that's okay. It's still kind of acting like a continuous line, but then we get to this point where all of a sudden the graph stops, that's an open hole, and we cannot have that value. It then jumps and it starts again at this point here where it's filled in. So when I think about what x values are possible, I can go all the way up to negative infinity until I get to two, and then all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore, but then it starts again at three and I can go all the way up to positive infinity. So how do I write this with math symbols? Let's worry about the first part, what's going on on the left. As an inequality, what we would say is that x has to be less than two. That would represent all of the numbers from this point here until negative infinity. When I look at the other side of it, well here it's starting at three and it's going up to positive infinity. So as long as the number is greater than or equal to three, then it should work. How we write this into our set notation, we're just gonna write them beside each other. So with a piecewise function, what you may find is that you may have to put several restrictions in or several bounds in, that's okay. So we'll say x is less than two. We'll put a comma and say that x is greater than or equal to three. What we're essentially saying is that x has to be within or satisfy one of those inequalities. We're still looking at real numbers. So x is an element of the real numbers and we're gonna close our brace. For the range, we're gonna start by putting a brace in and we're gonna say for all values of y such that. We're gonna kind of go through the same process, but now looking at y values. So the first question I wanna ask myself is what is the smallest y value possible? The smallest y value happens right here at negative eight. The largest y value possible. Both of these zero arrows indicate that we could go all the way up to positive infinity. Is there anything weird going on in the middle? Yeah, for sure. I've got this circle kind of going here and saying that, okay, two can be included, but two could already be included because it could have been right there as well. As I continue up, I see, okay, I have this open circle saying, well, it cannot be equal to eight. However, on this side and over here, both of these points have eight. So eight is actually allowed. It's just not really allowed right here. What trumps the other? If something is filled in and you have another piece that is not filled in, the filled in portion overrides the non-filled in portion. So all we really have here is that we have a lower bound, negative eight. Everything is possible in the middle and we're gonna go all the way up to positive eight. So what this would mean in terms of an inequality is that y has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. Oops, not negative infinity, negative eight. So then we can write that into our range. The last part of our range here is that y is an element of the real numbers, and we are done. 
I hope this helps you with domain and range in set notation. Let me know if you have any questions.